So I'm a lawyer uh, in the U.S. I practice law on, in, on the West Coast, but all over the U.S. And um, I probably, am, you know, my, my expertise, if you will, I'm a trial lawyer, and I respond to casualties. And most of the work that I've become known to do in the U.S. is, uh, is pollution. And, uh, and now all of a sudden I find myself here in Greece today talking about cybersecurity. And, and Ms. Hudson kind of tip, tipped uh, the hand a bit when she made a comparison in the U.S. about um, the incident command system and how things are organized. So those of you who are familiar with those types of things, I also see uh, the parallels between a cyber crisis or a cyber event and those that we might have with respect to, uh, to a pollution event. So this is, this is a carryover. Um, that I wanted to try to point out at the beginning of this thing. Now, I've been asked to speak more about the incident recovery rather than the liabilities, getting sued by somebody or, or hauled into arbitration over something that you may have done, but to talk about the recovery component to this. So I'm gonna to try to limit my, my conversation to that. If during the, the uh, question and answers you wanna do something a little bit more and ask me some questions, I'm happy to try to answer. I, I'll do it for free today, so just remember that uh, you get what you pay for, huh? So, okay. So myth versus reality. So what does that mean? Well, we can start with myth. Here we are in Greece, you know, and uh, Greek mythology is uh, well known, and we start with a Poseidon here. But if you think about it, myth, legends, folklore, they're stories. They're things that we used to communicate with. It was our version of an internet many, many moons ago. And it was a way to convey a culture or to convey a religion or to pass on uh, stories about how we thought the world came about or what the gods were doing at the time, right? So that's kind of a story that we use to pass on some information. And so mythology is basically studying these stories and looking back at it. So when we talk about cybersecurity, one could go back and say, we're gonna tell you some stories. In fact, you've heard several stories throughout the day, okay? So what's reality? Now, I had to give this one a good think, and I had to give this a lot of thought. What is reality, okay? So there's probably uh, some thoughts process there. So let's do this. So some of you saw this yesterday, so don't play. But if you didn't see this yesterday, raise your hand as you find the mistake. And there's one in there. You found it, yeah? Any, anybody else? Up in the corner? That's good. That's pretty quick. You're, you're quicker than yesterday's crowd, actually. So uh, the word the is twice. And, and, the, and the reason why I put that there is because it, there's something about the colors, there's something about the box, there's something about the font. There's something about the fact that you're sitting there staring at it, right at it, and you don't even see they're seeing it. And these are perceptions, right? Your perception has been uh, thrown off by some reason. You're, you have a distraction, or what I'll call it, you've been misdirected, okay? And so when you think about it, if you take perceptions and misdirection and distractions and you put them all together, that, in fact, is your reality. It's real to you, whatever you're dealing with. So no matter where you are in the assessment phase or the recovery phase, uh, you're, it's your reality. That's where you are in, in terms of time. Now, I'm gonna go through uh, five concepts. Okay, the first one is it's okay to panic. I, I would suggest that's probably myth. You probably don't wanna panic, but uh, it's okay, I guess, huh? I'm gonna talk for a second or two about the ounce of prevention, which is probably reality. And, uh, and then uh, I'm gonna talk about the, the law of the instrument. I'll come back to that in a minute uh, as well. And then um, it is not it, or it is not, or it is not IT, however you wanna look at it. But it's not an IT issue. This is a sweet, uh, a, 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 a C-suite issue, if you will. And then you've gotta have a plan, you gotta have a plan, and you've gotta exercise the plan. And if you have a plan, you know, it may not work out for you, but if you don't have a plan, you have planned to fail. You've heard this story before, right? So let's go through these real quick, literally. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You know, we, we ascribe that to Benjamin Franklin. I think if he were here, Mark Twain would probably have stolen that quote as well, but nonetheless. Um, and so, I, well, I can't, I can sit up here and talk about recovery. I can talk about liabilities. I can talk about all the horrible things that will happen to you and, and the hair that you will pull out and, and the lost sleep you'll have. The reality is that you should pay up front so you don't have to pay in the back. You need to take a look at your systems. You need to find out where you fit along the evolution uh, trail as it comes to uh, cyber awareness, cyber security, cyber risk management, things that we've all been through before, you know about. So um, that's it. I'm not gonna say anything else about prevention. People have been talking about that. Now, to a carpenter, every problem looks like it could be fixed with a hammer. That's his perception, that's his reality, right? A plumber, a wrench, okay? I'm gonna come back to this. But the point I'm saying is that we have to look at things a little bit differently. 
And we see a lot with government and agencies. When they find something that works, they tend to go right down the same path, whether it be through regulation or whether it be through. So we see government agencies, regulators, politicians. If it worked once, uh, it, it should work again. And they'll continue to do that. They'll continue to attack the same problem the same way until it doesn't work anymore and they're forced to find something else. This is where I made this crossover before. For example, is cyber risk management in the United States, similar to our Oil Pollution Act of 1990. Cynthia kind of went through some of these things, but the concepts are very much the same. In pollution, we talk about prevention, but when it gets, you have that accident, you have that incident, you have to be able to respond. In IT, in, in cybersecurity, prevention, right, is worth that, that ounce of, uh, whatever I said before, whatever Benjamin Franklin said. Um, and we talk about area security committees as well, and drills and exercises now are going to be required. Cynthia Hudson had mentioned that you know it's a requirement to to report a cyber incident to the National Response Center. Well, the National Response Center came about because of the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. So what I guess I'm saying is that the Coast Guard, for example, has used and, and using the existing ISPS and, and ISM code as, as a regulatory component, is starting to use the things that they learned in Open 90 for cybersecurity, okay? Now, there is a national framework that we're using in the U.S. Um, for uh, an assessment or the process of trying to protect. And it's not, this is not unique to maritime. This is throughout all of the different sectors uh, that, that uh, uh, relate. So this is, this is kind of the, the path that you want to take. Now, this is, this is a tool that we'll use to help you kind of go along the process. So you start looking at these types of things, and this will be printed for you. You can read the detail later. I won't go through it now. But you have to be careful, again, because we get trapped into a certain way of thinking. And if we follow the, the book, I think somebody said this morning, there's no two things that are exactly alike. It's not one size that fits all. You need to be, you need to be flexible. Don't get too carried away with the plan itself or too carried away in the requirements. You need to put your head up a little bit and look around to see what's going on on. And remember, just be like the Coast Guard and the agencies who are fo following a certain path, we too as human beings, we, we, we're, we're creatures of habit. And so our own internal teams will also follow that same habit and, and will also follow that same process. So we really need to step back a little bit and take a look at that. Okay. It is not IT. You can't just send us off to the ID depart IT department and expect it's going to be handled, nor should you receive a report back from IT that we're covered, boss. It's all good. This is what we call bet the farm kind of liability, right? A bet the farm liability, if, if it's a phrase in Greece, I don't know, but in the U.S. basically, it's such a risky proposition. I'm going to gamble this, this hand that I have. And if I lose, I lose the farm. I lose my home. I lose my, my means of a living. I lose everything. A, a cyber incident could cripple your business. It is a bet to farm kind of a thing, okay? So you have to work with your insurance uh, brokers to find out where the gaps in your insurance is, as uh, uh, Chris had mentioned earlier. You need to work with external specialists, as some of the speakers have talked about as before. And unfortunately, you're going to have to work with lawyers as well. Hmm. Maybe unfortunate for you, but good for me. It's, it's like a dentist, you know, you really don't enjoy going to see the guy very often, but when you need him, you're really glad you got a good one and he's available, you know, and you can get in to see him right away. So, all right. I'm just going to take, basically, uh, talk about the plan. Uh, again, this is more on the, on the operational side. This is more on the event. This is more on the investigation side, looking into the prevention issues and, and where do you sit? What are your vulnerabilities? Now. Do you have the people in place? And, you know, do you need to take a, take a look and to see, uh, uh, do you have to report the event? Yes, we talked about that a little while ago. Do you have to report the cause? Not necessarily. You want to share it probably with others because you want them to share with you. But we all know in the shipping business, we don't carry anybody else's water. We don't, particularly ship owners, we don't like to share information. It's nobody else's business but mine. I'm just going to keep it to myself. And there's commercial reasons why ship owners don't want to s explain why they've been compromised as well. And I think it's a bit of foolish, foolishness, but it's the reality of what we have. Now remember, I talked to you a little while ago about the law of the instrument. Now I'm going to be a whistleblower to myself. And I'll tell you that because I'm a lawyer, I am also guilty of the law of the instrument because that's what we do. So there's my gavel. But here's what I want to tell you that I think you need to look at. If you have an event, so let's, let's forget how you got there, but you've had an event. There are a number of steps that you need to take in order to protect um, your assets and to minimize your exposure. 
which is a liability, right? If you lose the asset, that's that's money making. That's that's where the revenue is. But if your exposure out, out uh, uh, outpaces your your asset, and your liabilities, then you become insolvent, whether it be in knowledge, insolvent in money, whatever whatever the issue is. So you want to have a dual track. I recommend a dual track investigation, one that is legal in nature. What are your exposures? What are your uh, what are your obligations? Uh, what are people saying and not saying? Are you misleading stakeholders? Are you a publicly traded company? Are you saying the right things uh, to all the regulators? And at the same time, you need a business recovery component, people who understands the ones and the zeros, and it can get you back up and running on the commercial side. And they have to work together, but one of the things you want to be careful is that you don't blow privilege. You don't, you don't bust your opportunity to have that confidential information. In the U.S., the legal privilege is, is pretty sound. I know that in, uh, in, the, in the European system it's a little bit different, but the concept is still the same. Lawyers need to be able to understand the problem so that we can give management, our clients, the best advice on how to move forward, legal advice. It won't be the first time that clients don't follow uh, advice. We were, we were used to that, actually. You all go to the doctor, and the doctor tells you to lose 40 pounds, and you say, yeah, and you thank him, and you leave, and you pay a bill. Well, here I am with my 40 pounds. I haven't done it either, so it's, it's the same idea. Um, we want to make sure that we do two things. We want to give an up-john warning, we call it up-john, to the individuals who are going to assist counsel in determining the cause so that you can give continuous improvement feedback to management for the next time, or to find out exactly what had happened so you can minimize those exposures. Um, an up-john warning is kind of a corporate Miranda right. So those of you who have seen television in the United you have the right to remain silent, anything you say may and will be used against you in a court of law, blah, blah, blah. Well. The up-down warning is the same thing. You have the right as an employee to remain silent and not tell me what you've done or what you know. At the same time, we consider you to be a key employee that can help us with the situation, and therefore we're extending legal privilege from, the, uh, from management to include you as an individual. And so everything that we talk about with the individuals within a company, it allows us to maintain privilege. Um, you want to make sure you have good litigation hold. The last thing you want to do is excuse me, is find yourself having complicated the situation. It's bad enough you've got a problem with, with the exposure, but you don't want people lying about it, and you don't want people trying to cover it up. You don't want to obstruct justice if you have a reporting requirement, and you want to be careful that your people don't make the situation worse by trying to cover it up, or if, if a particular individual opens something and they, they, they're sorry that they did, and they try to delete it and make the problem worse. More importantly, when the investigators do come knocking, the regulators, you don't want to have people having deleted things or not have preserved the evidence that you need. And so the preservation of evidence is very important. And one way we do that is with external experts as well. Uh, just like we use a marine surveyor to give us testimony in court, we, we will go out to the cyber experts and, and uh, uh, work with them to have, you know, to put the case together, and we'll have what we call a Covell letter. And that basically says, as a case called Covell in the United States, where an accountant had to give advice uh, to a lawyer so that the lawyer could pr properly give advice to, to the client. So we have that in place as well. And then the other thing I want to talk to you about is insurance, and, and of course I had to leave, and that is basically most of the, the carriers who provide cyber insurance will automatically, automatically hire two lawyers. I know I'm out of time and a bill rang over here, so I'm waiting for the trap door to open. Um, and, I, and I just wanted to make this one point, if I may, and that is this. The carriers will hire two sets of lawyers to begin with. They're going to hire defense lawyers or, or your lawyers to help you with. Now, you may hire them yourself and they may pay the bill depending on how the policy works. That's your attorney. The second lawyer is going to be on for the insurance company to determine whether something is covered or not. Okay, we talked about the lawsuit earlier, right? Because I want to make sure it fits within the policy. But in that, in that second appointment, you also want to work with that lawyer or that team. You want to be coached on how you respond and how you mitigate so that you don't go outside the bounds of your coverage. So you may have coverage, but you may do something or not do something in the process of recovery and put your coverage at risk just like you would in, with a pollution case, or just like you would in any other kind of a loss. So with that, I think I'm done. Um, I'm taking the two minutes I saved yesterday. I'm rolling them over for today. I apologize. Thank you. Okay.